Hello, good Abend. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, and uh, well done, Torsten. I'm so glad that uh, uh, he uh, had a great uh, presentation to uh, follow. It might be a little bit difficult, uh, but uh, he certainly gave a great overview of the oil market. Uh, Saturn Oil is a Canadian-based conventional oil and gas company. Uh, we are here to uh, update our German shareholders. Uh, at one time, uh, a, a great uh, percentage of our company was founded by German shareholders, and uh, we're listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Their main listing is in Canada. Uh, for those of you that uh, uh, don't know the story, we are a conventional producer in the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Uh, mostly that's where the farmland is, and we usually borrow a small piece of land from farmers. Pretty indicative that we're in the grain fields um, and use a very small piece. We don't want to be confused with the uh, oil sands and where there's open pit mining uh, or thermal producers who boil water to separate bitumen from sand. Uh, it's very important for us that we keep a very low carbon footprint uh, on the development of our, our, our oil. And we like to think that it's ethical oil that we're producing in our light oil in that in Canada we have a very similar value structure to Germany. Uh, certainly we uh, champion uh, human rights. Uh, equality is important for us. Uh, and, you know, within our company we have some very, very smart uh, engineers and geologists that are female, uh, some of our top accountants, and they're, they're just brilliant. Uh, important for me, my daughter is graduating from high school in the next uh, two years, and of course she's free to choose whatever path she wants uh, in her career. Now that's not necessarily true from all the places oil is produced. So I think that uh, Torsten made a, a great case of the importance for light oil in our economy. It's not something that will be taken out uh, immediately. Uh, it's certainly very important. So I think it matters where your oil comes from. And uh, so that's why we're trying to uh, produce light oil in, in the right way. Um, as we've been uh, delighted to update our shareholders today and, and as we've been traveling through Germany, uh, we're back here in Stuttgart uh, two years ago, uh, presented in the same room. A lot has changed. We've grown the company quite a bit uh, and I'll walk you through that in the oncoming slides. Uh, the report on Business Magazine, Canada's largest magazine, uh, it's our largest uh, publication for newspaper and magazine, report on business. Uh, they put us in their study as the 18th fastest growing company in Canada. And that puts us as the largest growing, uh, fastest growing oil and gas company in Canada too. So quite a bit of growth and the, the story has changed quite a bit in the last two years. Um. When I was here two years ago, in Q2 of 2022, we were roughly about 7,000 barrels a day. Uh, we are starting our growth journey from the humble beginnings uh, coming out of COVID. In Q1 of 2021, we were all of 233 barrels a day of oil. Uh, we're standing here today, two years later, and we're now about 27,000 uh, barrels of oil equivalent every day. It's a, more than a three times increase in production. Uh, and really what we've done is, is uh, well, the timing couldn't be better. Uh, light oil trades at a very strong price internationally, uh, as well as in Canada. And so that equates to quite a bit of cash flow. Uh, we switch gears uh, currently from uh, our growth mode into harvest mode to uh, capture this great amount of cash flow. Uh, we put out our guidance earlier this year based on a $75 West Texas intermediate oil price. And that had about $355 million uh, uh, dollars of uh, annual EBITDA. Uh, we're probably, the oil is through $80 now, so we're probably closer to $365 million EBITDA. So about every day, our company produces a million dollars of EBITDA. Maybe it's a leap year, so we'll produce 366 this year. So uh, when that's uh, taken into account after interest, uh, we'll have about $300 million of cash flow. And that works out to be roughly about $1.90 Canadian per share. Our shares traded up today, I think, to about $2.80. So we're about 1.5 times cash flow, uh, a pretty inexpensive metric for the, for the sustainable cash flow that we put together. And by sustainable, I mean with the projects that we have in-house for development on a low-risk basis, we can continue our current um, uh, production pace for the next 20 years.
So with our $300 million of annual cash flow, about 50% of it goes towards paying down debt. We've had a terrific lender uh, based the family office out of New York that uh, at the peak, at the start of 2023, uh, we had lo borrowed roughly about $600 million Canadian. Uh, we've been paying that down at a very rapid rate. Half of our cash flow to pays that down. And we expect by year end we'll be somewhere around $270 million. So to, uh, by the end of this month, we'll have repaid since the start of last year about $265 million. So a big priority for us is to deleverage the balance sheet as quickly as possible. Um, terrific lender, but uh, we, you know, our philosophy is to uh, return all that debt and then have the shareholders uh, own 100% of the company thereabouts. So, by its logical conclusion, we'll repay 100% of a debt down by the start of 2026, which is not too far off. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, we'll end this year at about 280 million, 270 million dollars of debt, and somewhere, you know, that would be less than one times our EBITDA, quite a low leverage number. And some point in time, we'll likely put this as a permanent part of our capital structure, uh, and then term it out. And then now we'll have 150 million dollars of free cash flow, no longer going to pay down debt and we'll have to find some direction for it. Uh, certainly the board of directors has some ideas uh, at that point in time, maybe instituting a dividend. Uh, we could do a share buyback. Our shares seem quite inexpensive right now compared to our peers. Uh, or we continue back in our growth trend and increase uh, capital expenditures and more drilling. Um, so something I think that's in the near term uh, where there's going to be an inflection point. And, uh, and, and I think a big part of that just comes from paying down debt very quickly. We currently have 161 million shares outstanding. Uh, in our growth last year, we picked up a couple of large uh, U.S. shareholders. Uh, one of them had been with us since the start, since 2021, since we started our growth trek. Uh, that's uh, Libra Advisors out of New York. Uh, they've been very good. They've initially invested $10 million into us, and they've, they've uh, increased that fourfold uh, over the past few years. Uh, so they own about 12% of our company now. And then uh, earlier last year, another large U.S. institution called uh, GMT Capital out of Atlanta, a longtime investor in the Canadian oil patch, uh, has invested at that point in time $60 million and has continued to increase uh, their ownership over the past year to now they own about 28% of our company. So two large U.S. Inv institutional holders hold 40%. Uh, they're, they're good friends to each other and they talk quite a bit. So big, big shareholders, big expectations. And uh, they've all come in in the, basically the range of uh, with a $2 handle where the stock is still trading now. But uh, luckily, uh, we are look to be breaking through that $3 barrier soon. Uh, net debt, like I said, stands at about uh, $400 million. Uh, and so our market cap has just recently passed through our debt, which is a great milestone uh, to have that and continue to look that to carry on there. So enterprise value is roughly 900 million Canadian, and we look to maintain that equity, that uh, enterprise value uh, by paying down debt. So uh, the, the other part of that function is hopefully the market cap follows uh, in step. So from uh, from sustainability point of view, I spoke to you that we have a number of projects that will sustain uh, our production. Uh, we just had our third party independent reserve evaluation done. It's done by Ryder Scott out of Houston. Uh, and they tallied up 145 million barrels of 2P reserves. So that gives us a very long uh, reserve life index of about 15 years. That's predicated on over 800 drilling locations that they've had uh, opined on our land that we hold that's uh, approved for development that they've uh, they've re uh, they've given reserves to and on top of those 800 locations we think we have at least 500 plus more uh, that our geologists and engineers have uh, identified on maps that internally we hold really over 20 uh, years of drilling inventory so uh, and of course as we get through that we'll drill about 60 plus wells this year uh, they're always finding new ideas uh, so our four properties that we have uh, start in Saskatchewan. I'll start from right to left. That's the, uh, the, the light oil asset that we have increased uh, by about 60% this year. Uh, West Central Saskatchewan is about 3,500 BOEs a day. And uh, uh, we've added in two Alberta properties 
uh, over the past two years. Uh, one is self as a company maker. That's central Alberta. There's to eight to 9,000 BUE a day there. That's where we started our drilling this year. So the next operational update will come on our drilling in the cardium formation. Uh, and as well, we'll be drilling in northern Alberta. All these properties have something in common that it's horizontal drilling. It's very low risk and we're all, f and all are targeting light oil development. Um, so uh, lockstep obviously with our production increase has been the EBITDA growth. Uh, when I stood here uh, uh, about uh, two years ago, we were doing $18 million of EBITDA that steadily increased. And in the last two quarters that we published, Q3 of last year and Q4 of last year, we had over $100 million of Canadian EBITDA. So uh, the, the, the cash flow is following the production and uh, we're putting up these numbers every quarter and it's nice to, to string them together. All right. Uh, less my element uh, than Torsten, who went ahead of me, that did a great uh, evaluation of the importance of the oil market. I mean, I think most people know that the, that, uh, the world needs a lot of light oil. It's just a matter of where they get it from. Uh, so we turn to our experts. Each can have their own idea of where demand is going to be. But uh, certainly, I would turn to the, to the Americans. Uh, U.S. Uh, Energy Intelligence, or sorry, Energy Intelligence Administration uh, from the U.S. sees oil demand extending out to 2035, peaking at over 105 million barrels a day. Uh, Standard Chartered, the international bank, came out with a very bullish expectation of that going over 110 million barrels a day. And of course, we all care about the opinion of OPEC. They may be a little biased, but they have it close to 115 million barrels a day of demand. Uh, I think that where we're seeing it, that demand increase, it's not in Germany, uh, it's not in Canada or even North America, Western Europe. It's the non-OECD countries. Uh, they are developing and they have a hunger for oil. And so as demand drops off here uh, in Germany and in Canada, that's going to be more than picked up by these developing nations. So uh, I think that there's a, a long-term plan for oil and it's going to be here for quite some time. We may well be in an energy transition, but I think it's going to take multiple of decades to get there, and it's not as quick as, as some pundits think. Uh, so, so for us, I think that's quite important. Uh, Canada has certainly prepared uh, for there to be a continuation of, uh, of oil demand globally. Uh, the United States does take a large portion of our oil exports. Uh, however, we've been diversifying our ability to get our oil uh, off North America I'll point out uh, here that uh, the newest pipeline that we just expanded here is this Trans Mountain Line, which takes oil to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, previously, it had 300,000 barrels a day of capacity. Uh, we have just tripled that capacity and we're filling that line now. We look to make deliveries next month and that'll be a brand new export for our, our country, which is pretty important. Uh, we selling oil just to the U.S. is not the best uh, uh, to, to rely on one salesperson or one, one source of your energy is never the best policy. Uh, but for ourselves, we're diversified there. And uh, of course, the United States is a good partner. Uh, I would say a point out for ourselves, our three sales points are here in Edmonton uh, uh, as well in, in Alberta. And then we've got a sales point here in Saskatchewan and just on the other side uh, in Manitoba. And so those are the three places we sell our oil. Uh, I think that uh, Canada has done a good job of... Uh, uh, preparing itself that there won't be a backlog for the expanded production that's happening in Canada. Uh, looking at it at another chart uh, put together, of course, over the past few years, the, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Enbridge, one main pipeline, has supplied most of the oil to the U.S. And on top of that, we've continued to layer in new ways uh, to get the oil out. There's, of course, the Line 3 replacement of Enbridge to expand that pipeline. Uh, Trans Mountain was a new line that was extended. And now the Trans Mountain ex expansion is the latest piece. And so uh, really what it's done is continue to stack up export uh, supply uh, as, as uh, production increases in Canada. Um, we just wrapped up our drilling program and now the results have come in from 2023. We drilled 46 wells on an operated basis and had terrific success. It's been our best drilling campaign so far. Uh, on average, 
uh, we predict to all of our shareholders, and we're very transparent in this manner, uh, of every well we're going to drill. And each of the wells, whether they're deeper wells in Alberta and have higher production expectations, or they're more shallower wells in Saskatchewan, uh, we give an expectation for each well. And so for, I would say, for instance, I will start, again, did that, uh, here where we drilled 16 wells in southeast Saskatchewan on a conventional basis. This is our cash cow. Uh, typically, we look for about 69 to 70 barrels on an IP30 basis for the first 30 days. And these wells came in on average close to 84. So uh, roughly about a 20% uh, 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 outperformance over expectations. And that's right across the board. You can see in uh, southeast Saskatchewan in the Balkan area, we've also had about 10% above average. You put it all together, one area, and we're... You know, we were quite uh, transparent in our results. We were 5% below expectations on our Montany land. And so that has driven our expectations to, to do even better. We'll be drilling four more wells there this year. And, and I think we're going to uh, have some improved results. Net, net, it's about 13% above expectations. And so that's what's helped us uh, maintain our production. We have, uh, say, so to say, one arm tied behind our back because half of our uh, cash flow goes towards... Uh, paying down debt. So our goal is to sustain our production with the other half. Uh, we also had a report card just come in. Every year we have a reserve audit, like I said, from Ryder Scott, and they do an evaluation of our assets. Uh, obviously, uh, with the production uh, lockstep, so has gone up our reserves where we started, uh, we ended 2020 with 6 million barrels of reserves. Now that's gone up to 145 uh, million barrels on this chart here. Um, how did we get there? We also look at in terms of our acquisition cost. In 2021, our finding development acquisition cost, it was a, a nominalist year coming out of COVID that we were able to acquire assets at very uh, low prices. Our, our cost per barrel uh, for uh, finding development and including uh, the development future cost in there was under $6 Canadian. Uh, we enjoyed a net back that year over $36. So as an economic indication, for every dollar we invested, we'll get back $6 in undiscounted cash flow. Uh, 2022, also a good year. Anytime you're around two times investing a dollar and getting two back, you're doing pretty good business. Last year, we added barrels at about $15, and we had a net back about $47. And net back simply being Come out, uh, the, the price we sell it at, less the royalty we give to our government kindly, and then our operating costs. So on a three-year average, uh, we've added 150 million barrels uh, to our inventory in terms of uh, uh, through the drill bit and through acquisition. And over the last three years, we've enjoyed about a $50 net back. So for every dollar we've invested, we're pulling out 3.6. Developing oil is pretty good business in Canada. And uh, so as long as the oil prices remain strong, uh, we certainly have a strong inventory to deliver new oil production towards. I won't delve into every one of our properties, but it's probably a good idea to kind of get an idea of how we're developing this oil in Canada. I look to our uh, southeast Saskatchewan property. This is the area that we've increased it by uh, roughly 60% year over year. Uh, in this place here, uh, we control about 4,000 kilometers underground pipeline. Uh, that's 72 key facilities that separates the oil, the water, uh, and, and sends the water back down in the ground and the oil and the gas off to, uh, to sales. What I wanted to show here, which is pretty exciting, is this new drilling technique that's came about just last year in Saskatchewan. This is a open hold multilateral well where you start with one well bore that goes down to the, to, the, uh, to the pay zone and then spreads out to eight horizontal wells. So what you get to do is this is the farmer's field above. Uh, you can take two miles by one mile and you can develop it just through four little uh, development areas up top. So what we're doing is we're keeping all this land available for farmland. We're keeping our footprint very small uh, at surface. And then when we're done with it, we make sure the land's returned in pristine condition. We drilled about 40 wells last year, and we retired 80 wells that were old and out of service. So we're uh, certainly getting ahead of the problem and, and leaving no mess behind. Um, 
I touched on this earlier. Uh, here is uh, our, our guidance for this year. I mean, obviously, uh, we're looking uh, like a $75 uh, WTI expectation. We'll probably do better than that this year. Fingers crossed, of course. We have a very strong hedge book that if oil prices do fall, we'll get quite a bit of protection on the downside. We give up some upside. We think that at a asset level, we'll probably do $400 million of uh, EBITDA. We'll probably lose $40 million in our hedge book, just making sure the downside's protected, but that still leaves roughly $365 million of, of EBITDA. And that amounts back down to, like I said, about $1.90 of, uh, of funds flow per share. And after our CapEx, we're going to probably do about $0.90 cents of free cash flow per share. And where our current price is, we have about a 30% free cash flow yield. Um, five analysts, five buy ratings. I'm not going to jump into this so much, but Canaccord Genuity has lent us their research. And as you can see from this, uh, enterprise value to uh, debt adjusted cash flow. You can call that enterprise value to EBITDA. Uh, we trade at less than two times. Uh, we're the top pick of Canaccord Genuity, more big expectations, uh, but we're well below, below the average in terms of valuation here. They have a, a $5 target price and they expect about a 75, 80% rate of return on our stock. And they expect returns on all the companies that they cover, but the highest expectations on ourselves. So. That's what I wanted to go through with you. Uh, I do point out on this presentation, I answer info at SaturnOil.com. Uh, you can send me any inquiries, any questions. Uh, if any, any more questions immediately, you'll find me at the bar after this. And then from here, uh, new to our board here, Thomas Gutschlag of Deutsche Rostov. And he's uh, been a good uh, uh, guidance for us on our board and obviously from our German shareholders. And he's just a great business person. And, uh, uh, thank you for your time, and if you are considering investing in oil, I hope you consider Canada. <laughs>